What up, everybody? It's your boy, Young Fizz, and welcome back to another installment of a machine video. Today, this is Machine Routing Explained. All right, so this video is going to be a little bit lengthy. It's going to be a lot of talking, but I want you guys to really follow along because you're going to learn a lot from this video here. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the video. Today, I want to, like I said, I'm going to be explaining how the machine works. Um, you know, with the routings and the mixer window and all that stuff. So, so let's start with an arrangement, right? So I got this new project open here. And right now you're looking at how the machine, when you, you know, you load up the, the, the doll here, you're going to be looking at this screen here. What I like to do is, you know, if I'm, I'm experiencing writer's block, I'm going to create a song. So I think of, of a song. So what makes a song? right so let's look at the mixer window and and hopefully you know i can show you guys the routings and explain it all together so right here we have our our groups right so we're going to call this our drums right so what makes a song we got drums we got keys uh bass you have maybe uh horns um, your percussion, right? Drums, keys, bass, horns, percussion, and maybe some vocals, right? Did I spell that right? Vocals, right? So right away, I'm already breaking it down for you. So let's go back to the mixer window. So Say, for example, I'm in my drum group right here, right? So these are your drum groups. So these are like the groups right here. So you got your drum, keys, bass, horns, percussion, vocals, and that's routed to the master, right? So you got to ask yourself now, well, what consists of drums? Well, let's say our kick, right? We got a snare. We got a hat. If you're producing trap, you may have a hat too. You know what I'm saying? Open hat. Um, your tom. You're gonna do tom one, tom two, tom three, right? Low tom. So that consists of the drums. All right, for the keys. I just clicked here, like took me to the keys, right? So that's keys. You may have like a piano, right? P I A N O piano. You may have an organ. You may have some Fender Rhodes, right? A bass. You may have just the regular bass guitar. And then we have like maybe our sub bass. Try about that low end and dance music, right? Horns, we may have our saxophone, right? We may have our uh, trumpet, right? And then percussion, we may have our uh bongo you may have a conga and a cowbell so now we have you know an arrangement right so you got the drums keys bass horns percussion vocals let's go with vocals let's say for example we may have our lead vocal so let's say lead vox we have our ad lib harmony one your singer, harmony two, arm two, you know what I mean? Stuff like that, right? So right away we have an arrangement. So let's look at how the stuff is all routed together. Okay. So back to the mixer window here. Now, right now you're looking at your independent vocals under the group. So I'm under my vocal group. And this is what consists of the vocals right here. All this consists of vocals. This all consists of the percussion. Horns, bass, keys, etc. Now if you look right here, it says it's routed to group. So under your drum group, so let's go back to the, the, the group section here. So this is the group view right here, right? And the group view is routed to the master. Now if you click into the group view, you're going to have your individual sounds, which make up the elements of the group. All right. So now you have your group. 
which is routed to the master. So you've got your individual sounds here, and that's routed to the group. So your kick drum is routed to the group. Same thing for your, your keys. See how it says group here? That means all that stuff is routed to the group. Same thing for bass, same thing for percussion, vocals. That's not going to change. Now, you're able to change it if you want to, depending on where you want to send it to. So with machine, I like to stress this you know, enough because they made it easier for you. In Pro Tools, what you would have to do or any other DAW, you would have to create you know, an, an aux in, auxiliary track, and you would have to basically bust all that stuff to where, it, to where it's like under one umbrella. But machine has done that for us. So say, for example, now you just want to add a compressor to the drum group. You can simply do that by going right here to your plugin. But make sure we want to be in group mode, the group view. So that's group right here. And you can just add a plugin. So you want to add a compressor to the group. You're, damn, you're done. So all those drum sounds are routed to the group. And then and that's how your group is routed to your master. So when I'm in a group view, that's routed to the master. And you can change this. So say, for example, if you're like me, I have a, I have a, a, a Neve Satellite 50, uh, 59. And what I like to do is route my groups to the different channels on my satellite mixer, my summing bus, right? So I can take this output instead of sending it to the master, which would be really, um, you know, output one and two your master right here and it says right here see how it says your master is is, is is default to to one right one and two three and four five and six seven eight nine ten and so on now this may look different for you depending on what kind of you know audio interface that you're using but i have you know the ryan studio 32 so i'm able to you know route signal pretty much wherever i want to route it to and you can still do that inside a machine if your audio interface again supports that so that's the luxury of using machines so so you don't have to do all that extra work. You just simply load a compressor on the drum group and you're done. Same thing for keys. You can copy this over here. You hold down option, copy compressors all across the, the track because we like to mix with compression, right? And that's all in the group here. So if we switch this back to plugin view, so right here is your channel. And then this is like your plugin view. So I got compressors on all of my groups here. And notice how the group is highlighted. So that means I'm working inside of groups. Now, if I go back to the drums, I'm working in, in, in individual sounds. I could, you know, adjust individual sounds here. Right? I don't want to mess with that. Oops. So let's go back. So that's pretty much the bread and butter of machine. So you got, again, you have your sounds, which are routed to the groups. Your groups are routed to the master. All right, and then you can put whatever plugin that you want in the master if you're bouncing down a machine. All right, but one thing that you must understand is that, say for example, now if you load something in the master, it could be like a compressor or something, this is not gonna be able to be automated. So that's why you would wanna bust it, ex you know, to go the extra mile and create maybe, you know what I'm saying, called a mix bus, and then have everything routed to the mix bus. And for volume purposes, like what I like to do, so say for example, I just may add, you know, a, a, an EQ to the mix bus, right? So this is my mix bus. I come up here and I just want to add like an EQ, right? So we'll just add an EQ for just to be able to control. Basically, um, we just want to be able to control like the gain, right? So what I like to do is route all this stuff to mix bus so I can route bam all this is going to the mix bus right so now all all the groups that has compression on it right is going to be routed right here to the mix bus so basically essentially what I'm doing I'm, I'm busing all this right here into the mix bus so that means all these groups here the drums keys bass horns percussion vocals 
G1 is being routed to the mix bus, right? And the mix bus is being routed to the master. All right, and the master is being routed to external, whatever you know device that you have it going to. So that's how that works, right? So that's busing. Now, if I remove this EQ, let's see what happens when we remove this EQ. It's gone. It disappeared. So now that automatically gets routed right back to the master. See, these are your groups. It gets routed right back to the master. Now, another confusing thing that a lot of people talk about is the aux ends. Um, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, you know, when you're mixing, if you're mixing solely a machine, then you only have two aux ends. But what I like to do and what a lot of producers do these days is they'll have the, the effect, say, for example, like a reverb or delay, they'll have that on the track. But just in case that you don't want to have it on the track, you're able to use two auxes to send it elsewhere. If you watch another video of mine, I explain how to use more than one aux, like four auxes. Go watch that video if you're interested, and I'll include like a, a link down below on how to do that. But it's like four auxins inside a machine. It's like a workaround. But for the basic, what you want to do is Say, for example, I want to, I have my drum group here, right? And I'm going to look at my sounds and I want to route, you know, my snare drum. Um, let's just say, so this right here is going to be my, my delay for my snare drum. And the reason why I'm putting it on, under the same group is because, and especially with number, being number eight, that's the, that's the last knob I could use to see on one screen. So. Say, for example, I want to route my snare drum to this delay here. So what I'm going to do, the first thing that you want to do. So click the aux. And that's going to allow you to see your aux there, right? So you want to add the delay first. So you want to add your plugin first, right? So I'm just going to use beat delay. And it appears. So the first thing that you want to do. Or I should say, after you, the first thing that you want to do, obviously, you know, hit the aux button. And then the next thing you want to do is load up, load up your plugin, right? And so by loading up your plugin, that's going to enable you to route your aux to that particular channel. So say, for example, I said I'm going to route the snare drum to the delay, right? So now I'm able to hit aux one and I can route that to the beat delay. Make sure you turn it up. And then post is fine. So let's go ahead and add, say for example, a snare drum. So let me go to my drum library and let's see here. Uh, where am I at here? Let's see, go to effects, go to samples. So we're just gonna find like a, a snare drum, right? And let's see, random snare drum. So it's gonna probably change the name. Oh, right there. So I got this snare, right? I'm going to change that back to snare to make it easier. So now I have my snare sample, right? So if you don't turn it up, you're not going to hear it. So that's why I said make sure you turn it up. As soon as you load this plugin, you do that, you route it here, and you want to turn it up right away. Let's go back to the delay and we want to make sure this mix because we're routing it via aux you want this all the way wet all right and then also what you can do is control the wet to dry ratio using this right here so i can record a pattern All right, so I got my pattern recorder, right? And now I can just bring it all in. Put 
So that is the aux send with inside machine. So as you can see, this, this is very useful. If you're mixing inside a machine, you want to send different, you know, so say for example, you want a reverb on that snare, you can do that as well. You know, you can add maybe to channel nine, you want a reverb and you want to add the reverb here, right? So like I said, you go to reverb first, make sure you add that reverb and then call it reverb. I like to name things first before I send it there. So I know where I'm sending it to. It's gonna make it easier. So you want to send that snare to reverb. So you send in that snare and reverb and you turn it up. All right, so that's pretty much how you do the routing inside the machine. So I've walked you guys through, you know, the setup, you know, the drum keys, bass, horns, percussion. And I showed you guys how it's all set up under the umbrella here. So to reiterate, let me get rid of this here. You have your sounds, you have your groups, brought it to the master. In the mixer view, you can see how your drums, your drum groups, are routed to this compressor here. I have a compressor on the drum group. I'm sorry, I got the compressor on the drum group. And then you can see mix bus here and where it's all routed to. So that's routed to the master. The drum, everything's routed to the master right now, right? But if you want to send all these to here, you would have to add your plugin first. So I said, like maybe an EQ, as I said earlier, and then you can route these to the EQ, which would be your mix bus. So that's G1, and that way you're able to automate your master. All right, so that's pretty much the routing inside of machine. I hope you guys learned something for this video. I know it's a lot of talking, a lot of to grasp, but please, you know, watch the video a few times. And the more that you watch this video, you're gonna understand because when if you watch it one time, you know that's as as good. You know, you're you're basically soaking up the information. You watch it the second time, you know, you're you're really you're really starting to, it's starting to come around, starting to make sense. And the third time, it's like, you, as you perform it and do it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just, it just becomes easier every time. So if you just follow this video, you know, keep watching the video until you understand it. And if you, if you just don't understand it, you know, please drop some, some comments, some questions, you know, down below. Make sure you hit that like button, you know what I mean? To support the channel. Make sure you share it with your other fellow producers. And it's your boy Young Fizz. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you next time.